All right, we're going to try something new with this unit, and we'll see if it helps you. If you guys use it, I'll do some more. Uh, I'm going to go over the summary side in video. For those of you who want a little more lesson and a walkthrough, or for your parents to help them understand because you're confusing them and they're just not sure what's going up, I'm going to do this, um, and I'll try and do it as much as I can. I'll also have a secret word in here, but you heard that soon. So this lesson's called, uh, well, it's Unit 7. And it's 7 1. We're talking about linear relationships of the form of y equals mx plus b. Remember that y equals mx plus b is the slope intercept form. And we've been playing with an equation that's very similar. We've been doing y equals kx. Believe it or not, they're the same equation, just kind of used differently. This is a proportional relationship, which means it goes to the origin. In this case, the b is actually 0, but nobody writes plus 0 because it seems silly. So M and K actually serve the same function. If you remember that, there's a few different rules, uh, but they serve the same function. It's that rate. We now call it a slope. If you think slope, think mountain slope, M for mountain and slope, and that's where I go down face plant skiing. And some of you are probably better than me at the skiing, so you do. So let's look at the example they give up here. They've got this tour guide. He charges a $60 fee for booking a tour plus a uh, per day fee. Now that $60 fee, that is a one-time fee no matter what. If I walk into his office and say, dude, I want to plan a tour for no days, but I want a receipt. That way I can go home and tell my family I went on a tour, even though I don't tell them it's no days. Well, that cost me 60 bucks because the $60 fee is what he charges no matter what. So that's my first start. Now, we got some prices here. It says for a three-day tour, he charged us 272 $270 plus the booking fee. For a five-day tour, he charges $450 plus the booking fee. So that gives us a chance. Three days is $270. Well, to find out the daily rate, all I have to do is divide 270 by 3. So 270 divided by 3. Well, 3 goes in to 270. 9 times, or sorry, it goes into 27 9 times, and that, that's a straight up 27, that leaves me 0, so it's $90 per day. That gives me my daily fee. So believe it or not, I've actually got the equation now. So I could write this equation up here, and I'm going to write it right up here in the space I have. I love putting a, the trees already squashed and unplanted. You might as well put some graphite to it. So now I know the daily fee, that's my M, and it's times day. X becomes my days. Remember, that's my input. Y is the total price, the output. So $90 plus, remember, it costs that $60 fee just for booking. So there comes my equation. I can take that equation and make me a table. So I look down here, and they've kind of gone the big long route and said uh, it's $60 plus 90 times 1. They've re rewritten this equation kind of backwards. I don't like that, but that's all right. So one day, it costs 150 bucks. They did the same thing all the way through and fill out a table. That table can now be used by me to do anything else. Now, we've talked about this, but think about a job where you're working. Uh, let's say uh, you're working in a store. For every rubber ducky you sell, you get 50 cents, but at the start of the day, they give you six bucks, just so you at least have some money. So your equation would become y equals point five or 0 0.50 if you want to go to the 50 cents times x which is the number of rubber duckies you sell plus your six bucks and then you could calculate hey how many rubber duckies do i have to do i have to sell in order to make this amount of money i want this is just kind of a way these are used now let's look at some problems here uh, we've got two sample problems we'll go through them let me move this paper up so here's the first one you earn a base fee, remember that's that starting value, that's going to be your B. A base fee plus an hourly rate, that's going to be whatever M is, is your hourly rate for running errands. You earn $20 when it takes one hour to run errands. You earn $35 when it takes two hours to run errands. And you earn $50 when it takes three hours to run errands. Now they gave you three questions, but it, it comes backwards, or I gave you, however you want to say it realistically ignore the questions you know what they're going to ask they're going to want m and b right you know they're going to ask for it. so ignore these and go straight to the table now the first thing with any table here you want to label it 
So one is the hours, right? That first row is the hours. That second row is the total money. How much did you get in total? And we're also gonna label these. Remember the funny thing about tables is you gotta label them X and Y. They're always X and Y. If somebody makes their table backwards, please slap them for me because they've done it messy just to mess people up. So let's look down. It said for one hour, we get 20 bucks. For two hours, we get 35 bucks. And for three hours, we get 50 bucks. That's great. So let's figure it out. Well, we know that we can find it. Before, do you remember when we said K equals, hopefully you're saying it in your head right now, Y over X, right? It's the same thing for M. M can also represent, and I've already told you it's rise over run, but it can also re represent the difference in Y over the difference in X. Now be careful, your table has X on top and Y in the bottom. This has Y on top and X on the bottom. Let's keep that in mind. So to find the difference, we're going to calculate. So from one to two, how much did we rise? Well, we rose one. From two to three, how much did we rise? Well, we rose one. So over here, my difference in X, and I'm gonna pick one of these, and in a moment I'll be doing the Y, one of these. My difference in X here was one. I like anything over one because it's itself. So now I go down here to Y. What's the difference between $20 and $35? And this is important, listen to this. If, from, if your table is going this way, but it's getting smaller, like if I had 20 bucks to 10 bucks, that would be getting smaller, right? I would make a negative. That's important because it'll change your slope. The difference between 20 and $35 is $15. Between 35 and 50, it's also $15. So now I've got a difference in Y. And remember, I'm only gonna take one of them. So I put 15. Well, 15 over one, anything over one is itself. So 15, I now know I now know the hourly rate, right? Because that's the slope. And we've said slope is the same thing as K. And K is the hourly rate, or K is rate. So my hourly rate is $15. I can actually go up and fill this out now, $15. But I need to find out what was the starting fee? What was the starting value? To do that, I'm gonna do something called regress. I'm gonna go backwards in my problem and regress. So I'm gonna go this way and I could make a table or I can just have myself a little invisible spot over here and I'm gonna go subtract one. Well, what's one minus one? Well, it's zero. And the funny thing about the B, the funny thing about the, the B, the Y-intercept, in the case of the Y-intercept, X is always zero. The X coordinate is always zero in the Y-intercept. So that's what I wanna see. Now I'm gonna go back here and $20 minus 15, I kind of made a little room for myself. What's 20 minus 15? Well, that's five. So here, when the hours are nothing, I charge $5. That's my starting value because X is zero and Y is five. That says that Y, this five here is my B or my Y intercept, so $5. So no matter what, when I'm running errands, I charge $5 right off the bat and then 15 bucks per hour. Now, if I wanted to write this equation, remember it's y equals mx plus b. Well, I know that m is my hourly rate. That's $15 times the hours. In this case, hours were x plus $5. Now, for any number of hours you need to be run errands, I can tell you exactly how much it's gonna cost you. All right, uh, here's the bonus here. If on the front of your paper you write balloon, I will give you five extra credit points. I won't do that all the time, but sometimes I will. Uh, if you share it with people, make them work for it. Make them go watch the video or just smile at yourself when they don't, even though you told them to. So let's look at this one. We've got Xavier. He earns $20 a day plus a fee for each room cleaned. Now that $20 a day, that's his starting value. No matter what, when he shows up, Drives up, unlocks the van, take out the cleaning supplies, it costs you 20 bucks if he does nothing. So $20, that's our B. That's our base fee, right? Uh, for cleaning six rooms, he earned $252 plus his $20 fee. So that's a total of $272.
Good. Now I know what that is, right? So I'm going to make a table. To do that, the first thing I'm going to have is my x and y coordinates. Well, x, that in this case, that's going to be, not days, it's going to be each room cleaned, right? The rooms are what he bases on. So rooms. And again, as is common in a lot of tables, down here it's going to be total amount of money. We're going to label them X and Y. Remember, X is the input, Y is the output. So I can make this table anything I want. If I started here, I could stretch my table. If I start with one here, I could stretch my table out. I'm going to cheat and start with six down here because I know at six is $272 and I'm gonna work my way backwards. It's my own table. I could do anything I want. I could skip numbers. I could lose my mind. I could do whatever. So now I need to figure out what is the per room fee. I'm gonna go back here. They, they were kind enough to tell me how much he got for six rooms. He got $252. Well, I'm gonna divide that by six. So that'll give me the total price per room. So six goes into two, no times. It goes into 25 four times, because that's six times four is 24. And I bring down the two, I get 12. Six goes into 12 two times, and six times two is 12, and that leaves me with nothing. So he's getting $42 per room. If I were to write my equation, it would be y equals 42x, where x is the number of rooms, plus 20. Oops. Okay, so now I go up, up here. To figure out what this is, I'm gonna replace X with whatever value is. So, and I'm gonna run out of some room here, but I'll do 42 times, X in this case is five, plus 20. So what's 42 times five? I'll let you take a moment and get it. Do, 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 And hopefully you came up with $210 plus 20. 210 plus 20 is $230. Now you'll notice, I could do all this, but I want you to notice what happens up here. All I'm really doing is subtracting 42, aren't I? Remember when I did this before? So 42, so I could cheat. Um, and I'm, I specifically went down here so to make the last one not cheatable, but we'll easily do that. And I can work my way through. So I can subtract 42 from 230, and I get $188. And I can keep working my way down. So 42 from 188 is 146. But I cheated here. <laughs> I skip from three to one. And tables don't have to be sequential. They can actually skip like that. But I can do exactly what I had before. I got some more space over here. I can say that y equals 42 times one plus 20. 42 times one is 42. So 42 plus 20, and that's y there. And that's $62. So if he comes in and does one room, it's $62. So I hope this helped a little bit. If it did, let me know. If there's something you'd like better, let me know, and we'll get him done.